Hi there. I am Tanya Windegger and I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And I get asked the question by you guys all the time, is EMDR working for people with complex PTSD or is it not? <laughs> so I even done a live video in our Facebook group just recently as well on this topic. And I still keep getting uh, questions uh, from people all the time. So I do another video for the YouTube channel. Because I think it's a very powerful technique or it can be. Okay. It's got eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy. And while well, it works or has very beneficial effect for some people, there's two reasons I think why it doesn't work for other people. And I want to cover these. Okay? So it's quite a new therapy in a way. It's only been kind of starting to be developed in the 1980s and it's by a psychologist and her name is Francine Shapiro. She noticed that her, some of her disturbing thoughts kind of dissolved or lessened when she moved her eyes in a certain way. So this is how this um, therapy kind of developed. And it's been really, really beneficial if people who have PTSD, you know, the classical PTSD, but when they had an exposure or something in their adult life, like a car accident and so forth. Or for veterans, it's been you know, shown to have some really life-changing um, results for them and really changing the quality of life and so forth. But then when you talk to people with complex PTSD, yeah, some people telling you no, you know, it was really, really traumatizing and overwhelming. And you know, I've met people who actually quit therapy full stop for years, you know, they were too scared to go back there because it was just so overwhelming for them. So I don't want that to happen to you. Okay. <laughs> so but I think one reason why it worked for some people, or the people I've met it works, they were people that already been through therapy for quite a number of years. They've learned techniques and tools to help themselves to regulate their emotions. They already had some sense of safety again in this world. And most of these people had daily practices of either mindfulness or meditation. So they were quite a far way into their healing journey, so to speak. And then when they tried EMDR then, it had some life-changing uh, benefits for them. You know, things really changed. They really could process and integrate that trauma and, and move on and move forward. Well, that's exactly what we want. So why did it not work for other people is because I really think it depends on where you're at in your healing journey. So if you still feel really, really overwhelmed and you just cannot regulate your emotions, you know, there was a time in my life where if someone just looked at me a little bit funny or just was kind of a bit absent-minded and didn't really register me, then everything just came spiraling out of control for me or I just collapsed internally and I, I was just a mess, you know, so I had to do a lot of work there first. And if that's where you're at, EMDR may be really, really overwhelming and triggering for you. And to, to, to work on this first, I believe that something like DBT, the Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, is much better to, to, to help you learn to regulate emotions and, and be, become more self-aware again, you know, find your true self before you, you go into um, trying to process and integrate some of the past trauma, okay, the, the more difficult stuff. So I think that was number one, where you're at on your healing journey. And number two is the therapist, okay. You need to have a therapist, it's not just, you know, that has knowledge about complex PTSD, it has to be a therapist that can be in tune with you, that can really read you well, so that you have to see that person for a while, so that there's that relationship there, and they really recognize when you go, in, just before you go outside that window of tolerance, you know how I always talk about Dan Siegel's window of tolerance, like if you go above the window of tolerance, then you go into hyper arousal, or when you go below the window of tolerance, into that, that non-dissociated state, there's no processing and there's no integration of trauma happening there. That's just when the overwhelming re-traumatization happens. So that is so important, it's crucial that that therapist you work with can recognize this and help you to stay within that window of tolerance, you know. And the window of tolerance might be only trying to start with. <laughs> that, that's okay. But th that person needs to be in tune. And if, if that is not happening for you, 
then EMDR will not work. It just it, it can't work. It's just going to be overwhelming. And I, I so don't want that to happen to you. So be very mindful when you meet a therapist. And if, if, it, it, if it starts feeling like that that person does constantly push you outside of this window, and, and even knowing you know, a few sessions in, you know, when, when, when you know each other better, it's still happening, then that person might not be the right person to work with you, or you, it might not be the right time for you to do EMDR just yet, and something else like DBT might be much more beneficial. Okay. So I hope you find that useful and it clarified some, some of those things, why EMDR works for some people and not for others. So, but as always, lots and lots of love and rainbows to brighten up those tough times just a little. Bye for now.